start recording. Yep. So thank you guys. Just wanted to uh, welcome everyone here. I'll share my screen and I'm going to go to um, today. We're going to talk about some fun stuff, um, you know, uh, regarding presenter view to start beginning. We're going to be talking about, um, you know, time managing your calendar. Um, this is uh, something that um, um, Jared James and some individuals I uh, think very highly of. And, 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 and it's very interesting when you look at this, that it's really not managing the time. It's really managing the people that we really need to manage. Because and we're going to talk a little bit about that, that we sometimes feel like we're so busy doing things all day long. And then you get done with the day and there's too many times where I would feel like I'm, I, I didn't feel like I accomplished anything. And then you look back at the day and you go, well, I did all this. I did this. I did this. And, and a lot of people will ask me and say, hey, what do, what, how do you manage your time? And basically it's really this little phone right here that, which is kind of the scary thing is that, you know, people say, what do you do all day? It's like, whatever my phone tells me to do. And that's kind of the danger part about that is like, we get so rabbit holed and so like pushed and go, oh, I got to do this. And then all of a sudden you're re remembering about 10 minutes later, you go, what was I even working on? What was I doing? And then you got to go, well, that's what I was doing. And so it's about writing down lists and it's right about, uh, you know, just being cautious and careful that you, um, you know, you don't just keep doing what your emails are telling you to and just going and putting out fire after fire. And so we're going to kind of talk about that. And yes, putting out fires is really important, especially in this season. But uh, that was uh, you know, something that we just need to realize and then just keep keep focused is what we want to do. So, um, you know, because really there is there's still only 1,444 you know, minutes per day. And then, and it's kind of funny that when you think that, hey, you know what, let's talk about what we're gonna do and you got 60 seconds in a minute and then you, it's like, it's the same 60 seconds. So it's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna fix something. It's really about fixing us and fixing us what we're gonna do and how we're gonna plan our day out. So we kind of want to talk about that. So many people, and I don't know if you guys have gone to Jody's class, um, those who may want to share, but Jody's got a wonderful class in regards to time management. And it's really about booking and setting time blocks and it's the hardest thing to do. And Cash, you've been doing this for three years. It's like, we talk about this, like how do you time block everything in and stay focused on that time block? Is that like super easy to do? It's a little challenging for me working at home. If I'm in the office, it's actually quite a bit easier because there's, for me, less distraction. But I always write my list the night before. Because if I wake up in the morning and I have all these things to do, and then I have to figure out what I need to do for the day, I feel like I'm already a day behind. So my list gets written the night before, and I look at my phone, like, what text message do I need to reply to? And then I set alarms in my phone for the next day for times that I need to do stuff. Because like you just said, I get so caught up, and I get, I'll get so many phone calls from, like, a client that'll be on the phone for, like, an hour when I shouldn't have been. And so then I'll have to hop off. So I set alarms on my phone throughout the day to remind me to call certain people or do certain things, but it's not, it's not always easy for me to stay on task. I won't lie. My phone is also very distracting. I have to tell myself not to get distracted by it because it's so yeah. distracting. It is. I mean, we take a phone call. I mean, we, it's speed to the lead. And there's times where if you don't take that phone call, then they call, oh, sorry, I spoke to someone else. And so I took a phone call, put it on mute. And I told uh, my assistant, I said, hey, guess what's going to happen here? This is going to be about a 30, 40 minute phone conversation. And we talked about everything from the kitchen sink to everything. Now it was building rapport, but it was like, that just took a lot of time of, of, maybe some unnecessary time, maybe some, maybe it will come back and, and come to something, but, and you got all that, those dogs, how many dogs do you have these days? Three and then three. people come up with dogs. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty distracting too. And some no, some people like Jessica. Yeah, some people like Jessica have a little chicken, their little uh, little ducks and stuff that they have. So now they're all distracting themselves too. So yes, working at home would be a little bit tough. I would probably hardly get anything done. So yes, yeah, so it's about being concentrated. And we're going to talk about that. So Cass, you're number seven. So what you just talked about, there's seven things that we're going to talk about today. And number seven is what you just talked about. So which is about planning your day and going. Don't don't leave the office without understanding what you're going to do tomorrow. Because you come in the morning and then this morning I'm sitting there going, okay, now what was I, what did I, what, what did I do? What did I say I had to do yet last night? So we're going to talk about that in just a moment. So the... um. All right, just all right. Give up on the idea that craziness equals importance. Um, you know, you know, my my wife oftentimes she go, "Hey, what'd you do today?" And I'm kind of like, "Ah, oh, let's see, what did I do today?" And you know, you're super busy, and so, but it is. But you know, I wanted there's a quote coming up that I really like. Um, 
Hang on your calendar. Okay, there's three things that we need to be able to put on our calendar that we want to talk about today, and that is if if it brings joy, or you know, or your role to joy to others. Okay, so obviously a lot of us have uh, either pets or animals or wonderful, beautiful children. Um, so if it brings joy to, and it's in our role to be able to assist and help. So a lot of us are picking up kids from school. A lot of us are, you know, making dinners and breakfasts and things and taking care of children and, and animals and friends and family and stuff. So it's got to bring that. So it's got to bring joy to others. You need to, to, you know, there are times where, and I, I feel like, what was the quote that I heard the other day to, to help, um, to make yourself or to lift yourself or to help you, you just need to lift somebody else up. And so I think that's so important is uh, giving back and giving service and finding that joy of helping others. And so um, when you've got so much family and friends and people around you, and it's uh, helping that. So put that on your calendar. If it brings joy or responsibility to yourself, so make sure that you guys are you know taking the time that you guys need to um, unwind and to be able to stay healthy and not have that burnout because you'll get to this point because I know Cass that, boy, when you were throwing everything at everything from the kitchen sink and everything going and video and this and going and going and going it's all of a sudden you just kind of like how how long can you sustain that type of um you know momentum and craziness because i saw what you guys were doing on social media and i'm thinking wow that's nuts so but it helped build and it just skyrocketed your business right in the first well yeah and it gave it um you know one thing kurt francis talks a lot about is people trusting you and seeing you on some, it's so weird to say this, but on social media, you have people that you follow. So they think of you in this weird way. And I, I hate saying this, but like as like a celebrity and the thing, the statistic he gave is that people in your own household that live with you trust celebrities 80% more than they trust you. So that if you make yourself known and seen, people start to trust you, even if they don't know you just because they've seen you. So I um, I burnt out after a year and 10 months. Mm -hmm. I was so done. But at the same time, I was also, um, I had a lot of, I moved states. So that was really, it was hard for me to sustain being totally present on video while I was moving into a different state. So I actually think that if I hadn't moved, I could have probably kept going a little bit longer, but I definitely burnt out. Um, but I actually think that I burnt out because of time management. I was prospecting so hard to any prospect that I got handed that I, I was like, I think I did it too much, honestly, which is kind of, it's like, I, I did, took follow-up to heart so much that I, was too much following up and I burnt myself out a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And I actually have sat with myself a little bit and promised myself that this time around and starting my new business in Southern Oregon, that I actually will schedule the things that bring me joy first, because I actually let all of those things fall off. And I got physically ill. I was mentally exhausted. I actually got a little bit depressed because I stopped taking care of myself and doing what made me happy and I would just, I mean, I wouldn't even eat a lot of the days, to be honest with you, till like 11 o'clock at night. <laughs> mm -hmm. no. I definitely burnt out, but it's, I'm doing it different this time. I'm not going to do that. Mm -hmm. No, I, I was, I was impressed at the same time. And I know uh, Jerry James is doing a class in the summit about burnout because, you know, we just, we want to go, 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 go. But, you know, it's, you'll look at Southwest and we'll watch for the flights of $59 tickets to San 39 to San Diego and 59 to LA for a quick Disneyland trip. And, you know, make sure that you are, um, you know, taking the time that you need. And that's so critical guys. And those who are, you know, um, you know, Jose, I think that, you know, those who are just kind of starting the beginning, it's, is yes, we get so excited and, and, and you know, you've got to make sure you're taking care of and you're, you've got that responsibility of, of your significant other and you're you know, just somebody that you're spending time with to be able to, when you're with them, you are with them, you know, and I know that that is tough. And my kids and my family, they understand that I, you know, play hard and, and we all be on the phone at Disneyland this week. And it's just kind of what happens, but, but it's, it's, but you know, I'm spending time with them at the same time that I'm quickly taking a quick phone call, but there are times where you can just completely turn it off, I think, but um, have got there yet so. <laughs> I, but, you know, I started telling people because i was i was notorious where i answered my phone every single time that it rang which was really great it helped me in the beginning but then it became this thing where when my phone rang i dreaded it 
because I was so accountable to my phone. So I started doing things where if I'm doing something that is an activity for me that's bringing me joy, I text that person, hey, I'm not available for two hours. I will call you in two hours. I'm in a meeting right now. Even if it's just a meeting for myself or it's an appointment for myself, I still take that time for me because that person, if they're my client, they're going to be there in two hours and I don't have to answer the call right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there'll be times where I, I'll say, hey, I can't talk right now because I'm in a meeting, but I'm happy to text a quick couple of texts. I can do that. But I love that, 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 yeah, you just say, hey, I can't, can I call you back in about an hour? I'll be available in an hour because if you are, and that, that could be where we're at Bishop's pumpkin patch and I'm taking, I'm on the little choo-choo train ride and I've got a listing appointment coming up, but I took the call, you know, but, you know, and so then she's all laughing and smiling because she can hear the kids in the background. So, you know, you just, they understand that, that we have a life. And she actually, when I pick up the phone, she goes, oh, I thought I was just going to leave a message, but I am kind of notorious of trying to answer my phone all the time. And, and agents and other buyers and sellers will realize they can get a hold of me. But if you know, and that's what's important about putting all these people into your phone. So you know which who's calling and so save them as a contact. So you can immediately say, hey, and have some custom you know, have some change your customs in your iPhone or whatever phone. So it actually goes, Hey, I'm in a meeting. Can I call you back? Or I'm in an appointment. And, and sometimes I'll just say that, Hey, I'm, I'm, I have an appointment at five o'clock, which that appointment happens to be with my wife or it happens to be, you know, it doesn't, it's not a business appointment, but it is an appointment that we're scheduled to go, you know, do something. So, you know, keep, keep that in mind guys that you need to, you know, keep that it's a, it's a healthy balance. Uh, and then I want you guys, and this is where we kind of talk about business wise is directly or indirectly generates money for your business. Uh, and so there's a lot of times where we could be on, you know, just just doing too much stuff that we're not feeling we're going to talk about these things today of how to generate money and how to generate business and so make sure if it's if it's not in one of these three things just really is there anything else we really need we got some money generating things you've got your own you know helping others that we have responsibility for and helping yourself is there really anything else that needs to be on that calendar i mean that's that's pretty much it so because okay. you, you know it's that's it so um you know everything else can be delegated so there are things we're going to talk about TCs, admins, marketers, assistants, um, you know, you'll get to a point where uh, you take a huge leap, you know, I don't know anybody on this call that uh, actually has, uh, I know every, everybody should have a TC, everybody should have an admin, but anybody have a, an assistant yet? Anybody? You could raise your hand if you guys have an assistant, because that's- I did uh, for a bit, I did for just a bit, but not did. anymore. Yeah, and so it's 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 a hard thing. It's a hard thing to delegate and say, okay, I'm going to let that person kind of do their thing. And then it's also hard too, as we're now you're kind of responsible for taking on salaries and, and helping you know them live. And, and you know it's a bigger responsibility. But it's uh, there is so many times, you know, so many minutes in a day. But now if you have two people or three people actually helping you build that business, you can get so much more accomplished, which is good. But I will tell you that the first time I got that new assistant, it was like I did a part time, and so can I afford this? Is is going to work and then realize you know you just make sure you don't just um hire somebody to, to hire somebody to be able to make your life easier without them able to increase your income so that's something important i always feel like if i'm going to bring somebody on they have to increase my income because mm -hmm you know you know just because you know i think it's just important on that so uh, we're talking what about do you mean by that eric like what are income producing activities that an assistant would do well, I want um you mean about about the assistant part? Yeah, like what what who is going to like how are they helping you make money? What do they do exactly? Yeah, yeah, because I don't think Cassie haven't met uh, Jessica down here on the bottom. Jeff Jessica down in the blue shirt there. So uh, she Hi. <laughs> hello Jessica. So Jessica is my new marketing um person. And so um, her job and duty is to uh, make me a celebrity. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll go with that, Cass, uh, of, of that. So she's doing a lot of my uh, YouTube and my marketing and just busting that out today. She's coming here in a few minutes. We're going to you know, record things. So she is like, you know, puts it in my calendar and she like steps on me and says, OK, we're going to do some recording things today. So those are if I felt that. That I wasn't that that wasn't generating income for me, then I would say that 
that I would probably couldn't do that. If I felt that I could just say, I'm going to leave on tons of vacations and let Faith just kind of run the show, then that's great. But at the same time, I need her to be doing. So Faith is actually doing prospecting. So she's prospecting, she's emailing, she's texting, she's calling people. So yes, that actually, that some of it's my responsibility too, but at the same time we're both doing it. So now we're actually doubling our prospecting for the day. And so now because of what she's doing is actually going to be increasing and we can see money's actually coming from her to be able to generate you know the, the the movement you know so that's important so i i could just say why don't you just do everything and i don't do any prospecting then that means that i'm just she's just making my life easier for me so i need to continue to do what i need to do at the same time now we're just increasing and doubling what we're going to be talking about today because of the things that she's doing so and it's tough because you've got a whole list and every time you have an assistant leave you want to make sure i always like have them have an exit strategy and say uh, or an exit interview and say okay i want you to tell me to put it down everything that you did for me and so then that way the job description so that way you can pass it on to the next person or that way you can tweak it and go okay phyllis you said you went and got mints for me well maybe we can scratch that off because my next assistant doesn't have to go get mints for me so there's little small fun things so well fun things that she, i was like phyllis that was pretty uh pretty detailed stuff you know so it was i sliced your apple for you okay phyllis thank you i love her and so anyway so uh but yes my other assistant a long time ago she would actually get these spicy mints and these nice cool mints and she goes like if i was acting a little spicy or a little bit a little, yeah, a little bit nasty you go okay do you want a spicy mint or do you want a sweet mint and so she would always she, they they know me too well and they know that i don't like to peel oranges either so they would would you like me to peel that for you so you know there anyway so there's that's way too much information oh, what? No, that was uh, Leah. Leah in the very, very beginning with with Leah. She was the sweetest little thing. So then she went off and had two babies. Yeah, two babies. So good times. So, but now they're on their her kids are on my my grandkids' um uh T ball or not T ball soccer team, which is kind of fun. Oh my so, gosh, how cute! Just starts all over again. All right, so I want to I want to share this with you about the delegation and those who are starting, those who feel, um, you know, the transaction coordinator. I'm hoping everyone's using the transaction coordinator. I I feel that you need to do your first if you're brand new. Do your first two or three transactions so you can kind of understand what they're signing and the paperwork and stuff. But then when it comes to just getting rid of that stuff just have your tc and do that because i think i don't know what it is it could be seven to ten to fifteen hours you know uh, just consuming on you know per transaction on uh, on a on a transaction coordinator but i wanted to share this with you um you know i maybe three four years ago i decided to say you know what maybe i'm just going to go ahead and charge my clients uh for the transaction coordination fee that they actually we, we get charged and and so it's 295 dollars and so, so far, I just calculated this this morning. So for, so far this morning on the year, that's how much money that I've actually collected on my TC fees and that I didn't have to pay for my TC fees. So what would you guys do with an extra $15,635? Yeah, so there's a long list that you guys would do, right? So, you yeah. know, and it's been interesting that that, that could totally change your you know your annual income your you know it's it's fantastic so i've only had there was three three transactions this year that i did not get my tc fee in because two of them were va and one of them was um a different program that didn't allow that tc fee to be you know i don't know jessica you probably remember but but anyway they're they're not allowed to pay it and i can't remember what that was so so uh that so you know but nobody's complained you know i just go guys this is a tc fee that my transaction coordinator which we really want to have her on board and she's part of the team and she uh she charges 285 dollars and and i just explain that and this is my verbiage that i just copied and pasted right out of uh my listing agreement that i put and i what i kind of go with here is i i threw this half now it's not quite half guys because i think they it's not quite half but i'll, I'll honor this if it is because i did one of them that i did half because it's just a way to get past any objection on this and just say hey you know this is my transaction fee uh, the tc works hand in hand and collect sign just disclos got hey by the way if another agent in my office or if i bring in the buyer then i'll just it will be half and immediately they just go okay that's fine and so where do you write this in eric because I've, I've, I've seen you do this but i don't know where to write it i put it right in the listing agreement under other 
just in the listing. Uh, yeah, in the list. And then in my buyers, it's already in my pre template, and I just have it in there, and it just says a uh, buyer to pay two hundred eighty five dollars. I only you, generally the only time I ever had people question it is on the seller side, uh, but the buyer side. I just put $295 transaction fee. And I also put for Jessica Fitzu, I put $1,000 for Jessica for her coordination fee. So, right, do you want me to start that one? <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know that my boss would like that, but if your clients want to pay an extra, I'm in. Yeah. I will That'll do a great fun. job for them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, oh. Eric, yes. I've been putting it in my contracts and no one has said anything. Yep, there we they go. They said uh, my buyer was like, oh, that's all you're going to charge me? And I was like, well, the other side I'll pay. Mm -hmm. the big fee um but yeah so it's and, been great so thank you yeah you're welcome so this is interesting Kim because I don't know where, where it's going in Nevada but California is going to probably get down to the point where eventually we're going to have to negotiate our commission with our buyer because our seller may not be paying commission anymore so that's some kind of weird le legislation stuff that's been kind of brewing which could be just kind of quite scary so yeah eventually we may have to go to our buyer and say hey Kim you know thanks for wanting to work with me but uh, my fee is like seven thousand dollars or eight thousand so this 295 dollars right here is a good start to <laughs> to see because if you have to put seven or eight grand and say hey you want to pay me seven or eight grand to use me, then um, that could be kind of a, a nice conversation. That's going to be really hard because a lot of our first time buyers, they barely have enough for the down payment and the closing costs. Yep. So it'll be, I don't think it will ever pass, but, um, but it is, you know, I don't know. Well, in Oregon, that's already a thing. So like, as a buyer's agent, I can tell someone if they contact me, hey, I, I charge a hundred dollars a day. And then this is my commission at the end. Like I can actually tell people that right now. And I don't think that it's like a common practice. And as a buyer's agent, you can tell people, hey, if you don't end up buying a property, this is my fee. My fee is straight up three grand. If you don't buy a property. And if you buy a property, I'll take the commission from the deal. But just for me to sell your properties and work with you, you know, you could set a rate where even if they don't buy, they have to pay you. And so and I think the reason why that's coming is like. Can you imagine walking into an attorney's office and say, hey, you know, we're just going to work for a, you're going to be a volunteer. I've been sharing this recently that we're just basically volunteering until we get paid. And so I like yeah. yes, that. That's it's well, important. I work with buyers where I spent every Sunday for six months, took Sundays away from my family every Sunday. And they got caught on the market and decided to buy later. And it's like that was five hours, three to five hours every Sunday for six months. And I got paid nothing for that. Yeah. And that is that to me is like in Oregon. I'm like, I would charge somebody for that. I'd be, I'd send them an invoice and say, Hey, five grand, six yeah. months of work. Yeah, you're worth it. Go, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I think in a way, like that's scary because it's change. But I think it's also that a seller won't be able to sell a house unless the buyer's agent gets paid. Mm -hmm. So if a seller is, their house is sitting on the market because no buyers can afford to pay a commission that seller is most likely going to say okay well i'm going to pay something to the buyer's agent mm -hmm. No. Yeah, that's why I think it's going it, to, there might be some change. And it was weird, right, when they started talking about this and where the buyer's commission had to be publicized the buyer's agent commission had to be publicized on Zillow and, and this new rule that came out maybe a few months ago, I started seeing some commissions at 2%. I'm thinking, hmm, are we already starting going there? You know, so, you know, if I see a 1%, then I've negotiated for a sell by owner. I've had to negotiate a commission from both sides. So it, it happens, you know, but anyway, but it's interesting. So we'll kind of see what happens, but I'm just showing you that that's the verbiage that I put in there. Feel free to take a picture, screenshot it, whatever you want, but that's the verbiage I put in there. And then if you close 10 transactions, you know, that's, that's three grand that you get to you know get to take home and and that's a lot of money to be able to to keep that um i like this where it says busy doesn't mean per, you know productive it's b-u-s-y or b-u-s-i so busy 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 so you know call, you know gets get some business so i want to uh, negotiate seven non-negotiables every day and i put this picture with the fork and spoon over here uh because you know like you know, I know Cassandra, you know, she doesn't eat till about 11 o'clock, but most of us <laughs> will snack a little bit here and there. You know, it's weird. I get teased by the girls in here that I have a piece of cheese at 10 o'clock. And, you know, that's, you know, that's just what happens, but that's my snack. So, you know, but seven things. So, but would we ever really go really truthfully a day without eating? Because you'd feel, you know, that you just need to eat. And so these are things that I just would strongly, and Jared James feels as well, is that just don't, don't go to bed until you actually get these things done in your life. And to each, every, each 
each day to feel like you actually did something productive during that day. So we'll start and that's really basically fueling up. So I don't know when you guys do this or if it's in the evening. I know that uh, for me, I'll exercise in the morning for faith. She'll exercise after work. You know, for me after work, I'm like, I'm, I'm done. You know, I don't really want to go and work out somewhere. So, but it's also, you know, there's a morning routine that I, there's, I, I read news. I read spiritual. I listen to spiritual stuff coming into work. It's like, it's non-negotiable. That's what I do every single day to get, you know, my, my mind, you know, and my physical body to where it needs to be every single day. You know, there's you guys, we've seen too many people, uh, young when I'm sitting there you know obviously I look super super young and my movie star age here so uh so you know when I tell people like yesterday I was having a conversation and they go so how old are your children you know like do you still have young ones at home and I'm all mm, you yeah, know they're they're all like 20 and up and you know I've got you know seven and a half grandkids now and they freak out when they hear that I've got all these grandkids and so <laughs> And so, but then I'm sitting there, I go, well, you know, then they share their age and they go, and then they're sitting there in a walker or they, they're, you know, on some oxygen or something. And they tell me they're like 63 years old and they're on oxygen or they got a walker. And I'm thinking, wow, that's like, that's like 10 years that am I going to be there in 10 years? Am I going to be on a walker and I'm going to be not able to, you know, do things with my family. And, and I listened to this poor, poor sweet lady that just had some more health issues on oxygen. And she just said that, now, you know, my life here, I worked all my life and then I was supposed to retire and then travel and do things with my husband. And now I can't really even leave the house without oxygen. And it's just really kind of tough. So I'm just sharing with you right now. And yeah, our bodies are built differently. You know, I'm kind of curious to see my, my brother rides bikes like on almost a daily basis. And I don't do as much as he does. So I'm kind of curious to see, you know, is he going to live longer? Am I going to live longer? And just kind of, we're doing a little test here, but at the same time, I don't want to be 60 years old or 65 or 70 and feel like that I can't do anything. And that goes back to our first, you know, you know, travel now, enjoy life now, enjoy, do it um, and make sure you're finding time to, to take those date nights and those special times. I don't care if you just take a walk with your significant other, but make sure you're taking some time. So whatever you guys are reading, whatever your morning routine is, um, make sure it's positive. I know I get a little bit of negative news. I kind of watch, you know, some, some news and I kind of share some stories. My wife says, read something more positive. Positive. So, but it's about, uh, you know, just being positive and reading books. And I opened up this cupboard over here the other day and I looked and there's like 15 books in there. I'm like, wow, you know, there's a lot of books. I'm always one of those people that will say, hey, let's get, oh, this new book. Oh, let's get it. Well, then do you read it? I might read the first 15, 20 pages, but you just got to make sure you continue to go. I'm more of a, a listening thing. So I do a lot of more listening on books on, on, in the car and stuff. Cause you guys, we have a, what's I call car university. How many hours do you guys think that if you're going going and showing properties do you have to listen to something in a car so many a, that's how i learned to garden this year yeah see there you go because you're it's educating and so <laughs> we there's so much more and so i'll listen and listen and listen and and it's just amazing <laughs> what you can actually listen and then you know i've got a little notebook or i can like you know pull over and write a couple different notes down and stuff but it's just about listening to things and you know right now our you know, tell, we're telling stories and pictures. People are taking pictures, people are taking video and we're learning like crazy. You want to do anything and learn anything, just go to YouTube and you can learn how to do it. So, but just kind of make sure that we're listening to some things that are positive, make sure that we're being uplifted on things and make sure you're taking some spiritual time as well. Uh, but just to kind of like, just, just to build your overall fuel up is what we kind of want to do there. All right. So make sure you have a, some type of morning routine. And that isn't uh, snoozing your snooze button, you know, through your exercise time. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. So, all right, um, let's talk about a la carte mastery. Did I, all those cooking people, did I spell this correct? I hope so. Yeah. Okay, good. Because okay. I had to Google it several times. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, uh, you know, know what to say and when, you know, and, you know, learning to close the deal. And this is a Jerry James line on a scale of one to 10. What are the two or three things that I'm going to need to be a 10 uh, as pictures are in order for you to feel comfortable to make the right decision to hire me before you leave here today? Um, how many people know these words? How many people feel confident that they could just go grab their phone and actually just take a, a video right now and just go blah, 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 and hit send without even worrying about what it looked like, what it sounded like, just kind of doing it. So it's about the confidence. It's about learning the words that you need to say. So, and I use this line, you know, I use it if I feel like, you know, I need to. And then that's what's so amazing is, yes, I'm not a big script kind of guy where, hey, 
I'm going to learn this because if Cass and I go down a script, okay, she just said that. Okay. All right. Okay. I'm supposed to, okay, Cass. Okay. Da, 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 da. And then she said, okay, we're, well, wait, wait, you know, you guys get those phone calls all the time. I hate it when I get these phone calls. I'll, I'll go. Yep. I don't need any, um, you know, I'm not interested in doing the, the, you know, putting my name on the back of the golf card, but I appreciate it. Well, how'd you know I was even going to call on the golf card? Because I know the script. I already know the script better than you know the script because I can, they call me all the time. So I know when they're calling me on those type of things. I know when they're calling me, if my business needs a little bit extra money for, for my business, I know when I hear the, the, the script is exactly the same. So it's like, I can see it coming. So I'm not a big script guy and I don't want to memorize it, but then when you need it, it's there, you know, but you need to practice. So you need about, you know, 10 minutes a day of just like practicing, saying these things and like, if somebody goes, hey, what uh, what is this $295 that you're going to charge me? Well, I need to know kind of so it's just off my top of my head of what I'm going to say and when I'm going to say it just so you actually are, are you're, you're mastering yourself. And, you know, I think we shared this before, guys, but if you want to actually read this and you just record it in your phone and then you just listen to it and listen to it and listen to it and listen to it on your car, then you'll be able to like just have these answers and you know what to say right away because there's in business and real estate. Is that, you know, when you know these little programs and things that you hear about, you can, you know, just enough to get yourself into trouble. And if they ask you another two or three more questions, you're like in the deep end about mortgage rates or whatever it might be. And then you're just going to have to say, I'll have to get back to you on that one because um, I really don't have any idea what you're even asking me. So you just, you just want to know. And that's what's important about education. Guys, there is so much education out there on both PCAR and, and Nevada Association of Realtors for $5 and all these lunches and things. And I went to an amazing one with Jessica, which was a, a social media class that we, that we had and went to, and it was just amazing. You get to learn, you get to, and so guys never stop learning. Okay. Cause you'll, you'll stop earning. So a la carte practice, practice what you need. Um, this is one that we've shared with you before is like, people are going to come up and say, how's the market? If I came up and said, hey, Kim, how's the market? You know, hey, Jessica, how's the market? You know, a lot of times that you know, we kind of want to go, well, you know, like, or or this is funny, actually, back in the 90s, when somebody would say, hey, what, what do you do for a living? I go real estate. And they go, oh, I'm so sorry. What does that mean? Yeah. You know, what does that mean? It's like, I'm so sorry. Is that because they're like, oh, isn't real estate really like super, super slow and really bad? Now, if you say if I'm, oh, I'm in real estate. Oh yeah, you guys take too much money, and yeah, you guys get you guys just make too much money. It's like that, you know. The whole mentality's changed because of what what they're they're thinking. And I've recently had people says, "Oh, are you okay? How's how's business been for you? Are you okay?" Because all they're hearing is the negative news of what's kind of going on with real estate. So if people ask me how the market is, and there's an amazing Tom Ferry video that I don't have up, but. And so basically the, that person is in Starbucks line. So that was the market. Oh, I'm busy and I'm doing this. And oh, I'm just, I'm just so swamped. And it's just, it's just been fantastic and great, but I am just so busy. And then the person goes, hmm, they were about to ask this lady to actually list her house. And then, then this the agent who was commenting about how busy she was, she drives by out in her neighbor there all of a sudden her neighbor is now has it listed with somebody else because they were going to ask, but now you're too busy. So you got to be careful not to throw it all out there that, hey, I'm too busy. I'm so busy. This is happening. I've got 10 escrows going on right now because then they're going to think, well, you know, well, maybe you're too busy for me. So I want to share this. This is um, a Tom Ferry and Tom Ferry says, well, it depends. Are you looking to buy, sell, invest or rent? And so you guys need to have that on top of your head and say, because they're going to want to like, you're going to pivot. If they're thinking, yeah, I'm thinking I'm about selling, or if I'm thinking about buying a home, oh no, I was just kind of curious. Well, then you need to know what to say if they just say, oh, I'm just curious how the market's doing. Cause sometimes they might just be having a conversation, but do I go up to my doctor and my de my dentist and I go, how are all the root canals going this week? I mean, I'm not going <laughs> to ask my dentist that question. I'm not going to ask my doctor and say, hey, any appendixes you taken out this week? I'm not going to ask that question, but I'm only going to go to him if all of a sudden I go, hey, dude, I got a side ache right now. And then he comes to my house. He picks me up in his car and takes me to the back door of the hospital and operates on me within an hour before my wife got to the hospital. That is customer service. But the thing is, is that <laughs> that it's it's you're not going to ask it. So if somebody's going to ask you, how's real estate? There's a reason why they're asking you that question. And so it's like, you know, and I, I always talk about, do you want to add a portfolio? Do you want to add something or, you know, maybe you, you've sold them a house would be in the past. So, you know, what are you looking for? So you're looking to buy, sell, rent or invest. And so you guys need to understand when you ask that, because they might say, well, I'm kind of thinking about selling my house. Oh, well, you know, and then you have a conversation about the selling process. But if they say, oh, no, I'm just kind of curious. Well, no, but what, you know, really, what, 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 why did you ask the question? Do you have like a family friend or somebody that, that maybe just triggered that you were thinking, well, actually, yeah, my mom was thinking about selling and 
And so when I saw you, I thought I would just ask how that's going. Oh, so where's your mom live? And so you just have these conversations and you can kind of find why they asked you that question. And, you know, they, don't, they might they might say, oh, I'm just looking for a rental or, I'm you know, investing. So kind of say that. So that's important. So next next on the number seven here is know your inventory. You know, got to know your inventory because there are times where and I love it on my my and I know it's a little time sucking thing that we're talking about time management. But I love it when my clients I can go in here because I CC when they get a house in my CRM system. So I know like I could probably go right here and there's going to be like. Da -da -da. So this person right here just got a house right. Oh, actually, that's a buyer that we're looking for right now. Where should just go? But like Kathy uh, just switched. So Kathy's looking for a home. And so Kathy just got a house center. But so I actually can kind of see. So there's sometimes where if I actually know there's some of my buyers that are consistently looking at um, um, less expensive homes uh, or some first time home buyers, I might glance at those because I want to see just the inventory. Oh, new listing or this or this coming on. So you kind of understand. Now I would encourage you to come in and actually go and look in the MLS and say, what is new today? And look there, look what's new. Because I'll tell you every single time that somebody's going to call you tomorrow and go, hey, did you see that new house that came on Torrey Pines? If I said no, does that sound really good? <laughs> you know, so, the, but you do have a lot of people that will call and go, hey, I see this house in Grass Valley. You ever been in that one? And my, sometimes my key answer to this, since I've been doing it for so long, would say, you know, not this time around, but I had seen it in the past because most of the houses I have, you know, in Lake of the Pines, I could probably have been in most of them. So I, that's my key answer. If I can't recognize the house or the street, as I probably have been in the past since I've been doing this for 25 years, but I'm excited to see what they might have done in a remodel because I saw the pictures yesterday and it looks like they remodeled the kitchen. So now all of a sudden I'm on the same page with them because I already knew that it was coming on and you want to beat them to the punch sometimes. And that's why I have them CC to me because I might say, Kathy, and I'll look at this house and if it's not fit, doesn't fit kind of what she's looking for. I'm emailing her already going, hey, Kathy, I know you just got that house on blah, blah, Tory Pines. And I just want to let you know, I don't really think the backyard is going to be doable for you. I, I love the kitchen. It fits what you're wanting, but I just don't think it's going to be the house, but certainly happy to show it to you if you want. Boom. I already just beat her the punch versus he, her calling me going, did you see that house on Tory Pines? But I'm already totally on it. So I want to be on it. To, and those are usually the five or 10 people who I'm sure like right now looking at houses, like we're about to put into contracts. So those are the type of people I'm watching, but it also helps me understand what inventory is coming up. So if I've got a lower income or a lower priced house that I, that I, that I've seen of a, a customer, I know he is actually not even going to buy, but I just have it coming to me. Now, if you want to actually set yourself up on alerts on those properties as well, set yourself up on alerts on that. So uh, then you'll know when those properties hit the market. So then you can call up, like if you have a duplex or triplex or somebody is. So knowing your inventory. Um, all right. This one right here, actually didn't, this it's double slide on the bottom, but I wanted to talk about prioritizing the creation of new business versus existing business. All right, this is a fun one. You guys, when you actually have, how many people have one escrow? Let me raise a hands, two, three, four, five, six, 10, 20 at the same time. So Cass, you probably had seven or eight, 10 at the same time, one time, three. I've had five. Five. So if you have five escrows, is it, is it uh, Kim, what do you got? Oh, Kim, you're on mute. I can't hear you, Kim, Kim. There you go. Oh, eight was my point and then I had to hire a TC but this is the first yesterday I just closed my last escrow it's the first time in two and a half years I haven't had an escrow I'm freaking out <laughs> so, yeah, I was going to say how does that make you feel so let me ri raise the your expectation on that so this is and I'm, I, I'm feel you Kim on that because we've got like seven or eight right now and I think we have closing like five and all of a sudden it's going to come down to like two escrows for me that one of them is shaky and the other one's a contingent offer so yes that does bring a little bit of fear into you so Kim what I've actually done now is on my board and now before when I got down to one or two I'd panic now if I see seven or eight my subconscious mind goes if I get below seven or eight my subconscious mind kicks in and goes Hmm, I better like kick it in on the gear a little bit here to be able to, 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 to have that flow of those, that, that income coming in. So yes, it does freak you out a little bit. And so, and I don't want you guys to go into the panic mode. It just, we need to go back to the basics right here, which I'm going to share to the next slides, which I absolutely love to be able to generate that because I went to Europe and I knew it was beautiful, perfect time. We closed all these escrows, went to Europe. It was a beautiful, wasn't a lot going on, maybe, maybe three or four escrows. 
And then I get back from Europe, we close those escrows and I go, wow, I don't have anything coming in the pipe, you know, so I got to get, get busy. Then you build it all up, which I did. And I got these seven or eight going down. And now all of a sudden you're coming back on the other side. And that's interesting, Kim, because I haven't really had this little role like that. It's just been kind of consistent, 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 consistent. So I don't know if that's because I'm spending more time because yes, my credit card says I've been vacationing more than I'm supposed to or not, <laughs> to, but, but it does feel that way. So I, I've never been on this role. I haven't been on that for probably five to 10 years. I haven't seen that before. So it is where you just got to get in that consistency of just staying consistent, but it is you, and you'll get in the subconscious mind, Kim, now that you're in this panic mode going, I don't have an escrow. And so now you're, you're just going to get out there and kick rear and you're just going to get it. You're just going to get it because I know who you are and you're just going to find it and, and, and it will happen. So, but that's, that's where I remember my uh, Vicky, who's still here 25 years ago, she would say, she'd hand me this check and I'm going, you mean, this is like all mine. You know, this is like, I can, this is all mine. She goes, you better save it. You better save it, better save it. And all of a sudden we had that turn down because did you save any money? No. <laughs> so, so that realized I go, I better start saving some money. So, cause you know, this is an easy, an occupation, easy occupation just to spend, spend, spend. And it comes down to, and we have a class on, on managing money too. But do you ever know the people that, uh, cause I always told myself, Hey, if I ever have some money, I want to give back. I want to donate, which would be great. But if you ever find some, if you make $30,000 and you're broke, and if all of a sudden now your income, you get to $60,000 a year and you still feel broke and you get to like $200,000 and you still feel broke and you get to a million dollars and those people still are broke. So, I mean, it's like, it's about managing that money. So that was a little tangent there we need to just to kind of stay on, but it's about just making sure. So I need you to prioritize because in the, in the existing business, we get so busy being a customer, um, you know, compliant, I don't know, just person who's just going to be just helping, 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 helping. And then we're not realizing the back mirror and the rear view mirror that we got, you know, have this new business that we do. And I know, Kim, we do things over and over and over, over again. And all of a sudden I go, boy, I'm just doing everything. Why, what, you know, what, you know, you lose an escrow or they chose not to move here anymore. Or you're just like, wow, I just spent all this time or Cass spends, you know, a bunch of weekends with, with no money. So, because they decide not to even move. So those are things that are kind of scary in our business that I just don't see that the general population population understands because all they think they're in a high market is that we're just scoring the dollars. And yes, there are monies to be able to go, but I really feel that there is so much more, but I will tell you right now, again, last night, and I, tell, I probably said this three, four weeks in a row, that there's more money that I keep seeing myself losing because of either poor follow-up or they chose a different direction, or I didn't make the connection that I needed to make. And sure enough, last night I saw a really nice home. So Jessica Fitzu, it's on a $385,000 over there on Live Oak, nice little house. Uh, that is 385 that is like you know i went and saw her and i i went back and i looked i said i sent it sent her to to a video email i talked to her i actually went to her house but it was july never returned my call and then several other emails never returned my call but it's like i have i did not do enough prospecting so cassandra there is a balance of not going too crazy but then i've seen too many this year i've seen too many people that i've gone to their homes and they listed with somebody else i saw one yesterday that they you know they went 595 on a manufactured home and i gave them like 425 to 450 now do i want that one probably not but eventually what's going to happen is i didn't take this 1 million too because i thought i only told them a million and now it's pending so you know, so now it's like, okay, well, now every time I pass by that sign, I can't wait for that sign to go down because it makes me cringe every time I drive to Auburn. But I try to look right, look right, look right. So it's like, I don't want to see the hat and see the sign. So then sometimes we just have to say, you know what, I, it's not going to sell for 1.2, but I'm going to go ahead and, um, and, and just work with you. And if, if it doesn't, then we're going to reduce the price. And so we closed the transaction today, actually, that we've had in the market for literally like, nine, 10 months. And we, you know, I re, I inherited this listing from someone else and he was just chasing, chasing, chasing. He started at $1.2 million and we have it and we're closing it today. Jessica, I hope you have that one, right? Please tell me how that one on, on Timber Ridge. This is embarrassing. Oh, sorry. Oh. No, nope. nope, that's the one. That's the one you wanted. See, see the business <laughs> that you know you're going anyway. Was it Victoria on 707? Is it Victoria? It is Victoria. Yes. Timber Ridge, Timber Ridge. It's closing today. Okay, I make me feel so much better. Wait, but I thought that was the one that you gave to Diane. No, 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 no. 
because they came and signed. The lady had a stroke like yesterday, right before the signing, which was kind of sad. Oh but God. she's doing oh good. God. She's doing really, really good and, and better. So but, but anyway, so, so that was exciting. Um, but see, that was like 1.2 million and we're at 707. And so look how where, where that market just went. And so that was a video I took yesterday saying, guys, there's there are steals out there. That was an absolute steal at that house for 707 at, at five acres at 4,100 square feet of a super nice, well-built home, need a little bit of you know cosmetic remodel with the guest guest quarters downstairs with a full kitchen. So I mean, there's just some crazy deals out there right now. So it's about this new business, existing business. So this is what I want you guys to do. I want you guys, and this might sound kind of easy, you know, for the first couple of days. Uh, to create 10 real estate conversations per day. Does that seem hard to do to you guys? I mean, 10 conversations. Now, what's a conversation? I would say that if Cassandra and I, or you know, we're sitting there on a messenger going back and forth talking about real estate, I would say, Bob, one of my clients, I've sold four houses to and his couple of his relatives houses anyway and i'm sure his kids will move back but he texted me this morning and we're going back and forth about him helping his brother find a mobile home to move into and so we're texting back and forth that that's that's a conversation i'll have that conversation i'll count that conversation as 10 i want you guys i know Cassandra, you know you don't like my little numbers and so you guys have a number because this is how many more escrows that I need to get by the end of the, the year. So I'm looking at it. So Kim, just have that number, put that all over your mirror, stick it anywhere you want to put that you'll just subconsciously get there. Because I really feel your subconscious mind actually gets there. But if I have 10 conversations per day, this is what's going to happen to your business. And this is, I'm going to go to the next slide. Because basically they say 41 real estate conversations is to get a transaction. So if you did 10, 10 conversations a day, that's 1.2 new deals you know, a month, which is about 14 transactions for the year, which I just did, I think, an eight or $9,000 commission. That's about $112,000. Would we all be happy with that? But then the question is like, do we really do this? And this is what kind of bothers me. And this is really what it does is that if I go through, I go through the day and I don't feel like I prospect enough or I don't feel like I reached out on the phone, then I go in to look on the MLS and I see that in one of my clients, I went and showed a house or showed, went to a listing appointment and they listed with somebody else. Then I go, did I contact that person? Whose fault is that? Totally my fault. I did not contact. Now, do my guarantee to get the listing? Maybe not. But at the same time, if I'm not staying on top and calling them and calling them and calling them, you know, to a certain point that you're not disturbing them. That's why I'd always go, hey, Cass, you know, thanks so much. Um, you know, with the, I, you know, I hear that we're going to be, you know, you're putting your house in the market, you know, a couple months, but I just wanted to share with you. I'm just going to give you a call in two months, just to check in or two weeks, just to check in with you to see if everything's doing okay. I'm also going to send you a marketing update just to kind of give you a feel kind of what's going on. And that happened this morning that somebody reached out that I went to two months ago to an appointment that we've been re reaching out to him. And he actually contacted me and asked me a question. And I don't know guarantee if he's given me that listing yet, because he hasn't really committed to me, but I could see See now with when he's in there actually emailing me and asking these questions, it's going to happen. So it's just about following up, talking to them, getting the buy-in and helping and assist. So I will go, hey, Cass, thanks so much. I'm going to give you a call in two weeks. Then I call in two weeks and say, Cass, I just want to check in. As promised, I just wanted to let you know that I wanted to check in with you and, and you know go from there. And so they go, oh, yeah, great. Okay, Cass, anything's changed? Anything? Nope, still looking for spring? Great. I'll give you a call. Maybe let's go three or four weeks this time. Sure, no worries. So then I give her a call. I have this lady that I listed a house a long time ago. It didn't sell like two years ago. She's moving to Auburn. And then she goes, Eric, you know, I'm not move until spring. I go, no worries. I know that I understood. I just wanted to make sure that we're staying in contact. So when you do, when you are ready, then we're here for you. Okay, great. Thanks so much, Eric. Really appreciate your follow-up. So I'm staying in constant communication because once they decide, Hey, I think I want to put this house in the market and some other agent is actually following up with them and I'm not, who are they going to go with? Someone else. And I share with you guys, all those who are brand new on this is that there's so much business out there because I take it all the time. You know, it's really rude of me to do that, but it's like, I always go back and I look down the bottom of the MLS and I go, what, who'd they buy this house from? And I see their, the name of the agent and I go, that's a really nice agent. Why are they calling me and not calling their agent? And so, you know, I think I told you only about less than 20% of the people go back to the agent that they bought the house from. So that means you've got 80% sitting there that is just wide open for any listings that you just want to go get. So I know Cassandra, you're in a whole new market now of all these new people that you're just going to go get it and get it done. But 10 conversations, I want you guys to schedule some time 
whether it's all in the same you know 30 minutes or if it's in 15 minutes because we're going to talk about the next block of time is that I want you guys to do follow up and that's kind of what we're talking about but I you know to do follow up for 2 hours without your phone ringing without something an email that popped up without something you got to go do it's just really tough so I want you guys to put either 15 minute segments 30 minutes and just say I'm not doing anything for the next 30 minutes 15 minutes if somebody calls on my phone the next 30 minutes and I can call them back in 31 minutes is it really going to be a problem no so you just go 30 minutes and you just sit there in the follow-up and follow-up. And I think I shared this with you, break down your database into certain segments. Uh, make sure, you know, I shared this last week because there are people like this, Elena Legal that um, that I shared last week that, that her house did sell, that we took the house off the market. You got a group of these homes that actually are, you know, maybe you've got 15 people that you've listed their home in the last 10 years, five years, two years, whatever it might be, and they never sold their home. And now all of a sudden, am I going to get a phone call or see a listing that shows up with another agent? Perhaps, but if I actually stay in touch with them and stay in touch with them, that's what's really important. So follow up, you know, so take 30 minutes and just follow up with these people. So how many people can commit to call 10 people today? Can people call 10 people? Thank you. Raise the hands. Good. All right. Cass, you're on mute if you were saying something, but oh, no, okay. Oh, I should must be on the phone. Yeah. All right. Okay, thank you, Kim. Appreciate it. All right, so that's what we're gonna do. And then uh, here it is, Cass, your plan for tomorrow. So guys, make sure that you write it down. So right before I go home, when my wife's sending me a picture of the plate of food on the table, she hasn't done that for several years, by the way, but it is sad when she sends me a picture of uh, my, my plate at the table. <laughs> So uh, I promised her I wouldn't do that to her anymore, but I want you guys to write it down and I want you to j jot it down. So, okay, this is my priority. This is what I need to do tomorrow. This is the offer I need to do. This is the, these are the three or four listing people that I need to do. And if you guys have a bunch of listings, you better be talking to them on a, on a, on a weekly basis and not going without a week without talking, texting, or speaking to them or sending them some type of market video of what's happening with their market. And so, especially land right now, I've got several pieces of land and they are just kind of sitting there and I don't want the client to ever call me and go, hey, what's going on? You know, what's happening? I want to be on top of it and share and show and kind of go from there. So guys, plan for tomorrow. Um, I wanted to share this one last slide here. Everything is created twice. Okay. And what I mean by that, and this is what Jared talks about, is that we have the thought in our brain that we think about it. So mm -hmm. I'm going to think about calling this particular person, but do we physically actually do it? So I might want to do this new. I want to redo my listing presentation. And we think about it for two or three years. Do we physically do it? So there are things that, that you just have to put it down on paper and just get it done. So guys, that's what our class is today. I appreciate you guys being here, but just uh, really work with them. Um, I'll stop sharing on that and I'll stop recording.